We are discussing class nine, chapter number fourteen, which is natural resources. Question and answer on natural resources. Why is the atmosphere essential for life? Now, as atmosphere is responsible or essential for life. Why? Because it is maintaining the appropriate climate. the temperature the environment for the sustenance of life and this life is not only us but all the flora and fauna all the organisms all the plants so atmosphere keeps the average temperature of the earth fairly constant during the day time and it prevents sudden decrease or sudden increase in temperature during the day time and night time and it also slows down the escape of heat from the surface of earth into outer space during night time what happens if this is earth then the rays from sun it they come and they may be absorbed they may be reflected now we need this energy so atmosphere is responsible for containing this energy so that our earth is warmer somewhat warmer so that the life whether it be plants or animals they may live or they may exist why is water essential for life water is everywhere you know you can think that if you don't get water if you are uh, thirsty what will happen so water is essential for life there are certain reasons for this first most biological reactions they occur when substances are dissolved in water that means all cellular processes need water as a medium to take place the next is transportation the transportation of biological substances they need water as a medium next is how are living organisms dependent on the soil are organisms that live in water totally independent of soil as a resource see the living organisms whether you know they are herbivores carnivores they depend directly or indirectly on the soil right and those who are living in aquatic they are more dependent how all the all living organisms they depend on soil some directly some indirectly so they we start with the plant the plant needs soil for getting support or growing as well as nutrients to prepare their food if you take take uh, organisms they depend on these plants for food and also other substances you know plant products for their life herbivores they depend directly upon plants they eat plants and carnivores they eat herbivores that is they are also dependent on plant because carnivores depends on these animals which are herbivores which are eating food eating plant as a food so this makes them dependent on soil indirectly and those who live in water the organisms the flora and fauna in water they are not totally independent of soil as a resource because uh, they don't need that soil but these organisms they require food and other substances and these aquatic plants they require minerals for their such sustenance sustenance from where these minerals are going to come these minerals are carried to water bodies by so from soil by rivers by rain water and we, if you don't supply or if there is no supply of minerals from the soil to water bodies we cannot imagine aquatic life it is impossible to imagine the aquatic life you have seen weather reports on television and newspaper how do you think we are able to predict the weather nowadays we are able to predict the weather for years how what is going to happen after 2 years you can predict that how the meteorological department this meteorological department uh, mostly you know in various countries these are government owned they collect data on the elements of weather such as uh, it may be maximum uh, minimum temperatures maximum minimum humidity rainfall or speed so they are able to study these elements using various you know state of the art instruments now the maximum and minimum temperature of a day is measured by thermometer which is known as maximum minimum thermometer the rainfall is measured by uh, rain gauge the wind speed is measured by anemometers and there are different uh, as i said state of art instrument which is used to measure humidity as well 
Next is we know that many human activities lead to increasing level of pollution of uh, the air, water bodies and soil. So, do you think that if you isolate these activities to specific some constrained area or limited area that would help in reducing pollution? Well, the answer is partially yes and partially no. We will answer it as yes because you know if you have industry here and you are living here, you will be directly affected. But if industry is here and you are living say 100 kilometers apart or far from it, uh, the effect will be less but still the effect will be there. So, isolating human activities to specific areas would help in reducing level of pollution. For example, you know, set up, setting up of industries in isolated region uh, will control uh, pollution to some extent. And the pollution caused by these ind industries directly will not contaminate the water resources, the agricultural land, the fertile land and this area will be you know somewhat safer than this area. Write a note on how forests influence the quality of air, soil and water sources. So, the forest they, they influence and they greatly influence the quality of air, soil and water. Some of them like uh, forests forest are responsible for balancing the percentage of carbon dioxide, CO2 and oxygen in the atmosphere, right? Because in by because of human activities, not even we are breathing, the industry is the 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 activities, the uh, you can say the setups we have made, the establishments we have made, there is increasing amount of carbon dioxide, and which is balanced by larger intake of carbon dioxide by plants, because plants during photo, uh, photosynthesis, the process of making food, it intakes the carbon dioxide, and then take out or give you out oxygen. So, large amount of oxygen in, is released in this process. Forests prevent soil erosion, right. If you have straight soil, the wind and air will take the upper uh, soil crust. But if you have plants here or you know the trees, then the root of plant will bind the soil tightly in a way that the surface of the soil cannot be eroded by wind or water. This is again a very good help from forest. Then the water re water resources replenishment or refurbishment or recharge. So, forest help in replenishment of water resources. During the process of transpiration, a huge amount of water vapor, it goes into the air, it condenses to form the cloud and then cloud gives you rainfall and that will recharge the water bodies. So, these are question and answer on natural resources. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.